C3 Risk and Insurance Services. Help, I need insurance. I got a solution for you. What's the solution? Visit our friend Joe Earl at uh, facebook.com slash C3 Insured. Everything's better now. And I got this $25 gift certificate. This is amazing. To Amazon.com. That's oh, a website. You can get anything there from real dolls to guns. Crime, Crime is a show where I, Rich Slayton, read a true story about lawbreakers. Uh, next to his good buddy who has a little bit of a cold and a raspy fun voice, Jonathan Shevsky, soon to be knighted in the UK. I didn't notice. I didn't hear a rasp. I feel like you sound great. Well, I have like a, well, I, I'm it's I'm getting over the cold, so I don't think I'm contagious. One and number two, like all the so we can stuff, totally make out. We can make out. We Fuck. did make out before the show. Oh, that's uh, so good. Uh, but I, I feel like there's a little bit of like I've got a little stuffy in there still. So, I had acid reflux on the way over here because I drank uh, a soda water too fast and it yeah. all spit back up in my throat. So the, I, the fat I'm man's, concerned. The fat man's common cold. Oh, thank ah, you. the reflex. Oh, thank you. It's from my chili dog addiction. I'm really glad that our logo makes me look much better than I actually do. <laughs> what are you talking about? You look beautiful. Play the music. And you put no, don't play the music. This guy puts on fat in a really good looking way. You do. That's fair. That's coming from a dude with a mutant body for fat. Let's play the music. The show that starts now. Oh, like right now? Oh, yeah, yeah. Do your line. Oh, okay. Each week, Rich reads a real crime story. I don't know a word that rhymes with story. And my homie John always has the hot riff. He really loves it when you send. Don't send anything send them to me. Him. Don't Let you dare. Crime podcast at gmail.com. Yeah, don't you send Label anything. Label John Chesky. He loves them. Make sure the lighting's really good. We got a great episode today, people. Mm -hmm. uh, this, is a, this is a treat for me. One of my favorites. Uh, pretty much my best friend on the planet. Sorry, I love you too a lot. You're up there. No, I, I, it's not a competition for the hierarchy. I you're mean, up there. As long up, as I'm at the, the you're fancy... up there. He was in my wedding, and he's asked me <laughs> when I asked him to be my wedding. He said, "Is this some like bonding for life shit that I got to do?" And I was like, "Yeah." yeah. And then now he's been roped into our friendship. For that the rest was his of our question. Lives. My question was, "Do I have to travel for this?" <laughs> that's so you're like, that's why you're not number one. That's fine. He's one I of my love you. he's one of my favorite artists. Oh, he uh, is. He's amazing. Uh, fantastic comedian. And one of my best friends, please put your hands together for Ed Greer. Yay. Thank you, guys. That, that felt really good. Mm. I feel like I was just like privileged to be part of something. <laughs> just hey, having I, Ed paint I that brought picture all for the keepers for your wedding. You did? Everyone did. at your wedding, everyone wearing a keepa at your wedding is I wearing one of my keepas. I was the whole keepas. day. Any kind of events that people plan that I have to go to, I'm usually really this drunk is, This is how, Julie, right? I have been in my life. At the t at your wedding, I had a box of keepas, and the, like, not even like You're all the, the same one, just random ones I collected over my life in the back of my car. Yeah. And I was like, Jewish wedding, none of these things. Hero to the rescue. Let's oh, go. I love you. I love you. Yeah, he, he, you you handed him out to the comics. Like you handed, we, we I got one. A yeah. couple other, a couple other comics got yeah. one from his stash of keepers, so that we could always be Jew ready. That's so Jew ready. <laughs> Hashtag Jew ready. <laughs> Ruben Houston Burrow. Oh, for a second I thought he might have been Jew ready when you started with the Ruben part. <laughs> The sandwich or the guy was born on December eleventh, eighteen fifty four, and <laughs> far was it that long ago, Rich? Eighteen fifty. Was it that much in the past? Eighteen fifty four. Well, the pronunciation of four has changed it, idiomatically. Yeah, that's, you're right. Eighteen fifty far, far away in a land long, long ago. <laughs> I can't stop thinking about that. In Lamar County, Alabama. Eighteen fifty four in the county of Lamar. <laughs> it's a Kid Rock song. Sorry, go on. He was the fifth of ten children born to Alan and Martha Burrow. His father was a farmer who occasionally taught at the local school. Alan had very little education, which may have led to his insistence that single-syllable words ending in a consonant all be spelled with double letters at the end. Bug, according to Alan, <laughs> should be spelled B-U-G-G, -G, and dog, D-O-double-G. I like three Gs or three letters, but uh, what does that stem from? What's our problem? <laughs> 1800s word fetishist. Okay, I, 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 this is going. well. This is important because parents then begin to take their kids out of school, and Alan was immediately fired because <laughs> oh, they're like, God. "You're just adding more letters to words now." I do that too. So should I stop? I just thought it was fun. I was like, "It's freedom, man!" I know, we know what the word is. Dude, fired. He was the first person to text. Like he he fucked the words up. To, I don't know. He's like, son, you wouldn't write laughing out loud. L O L L. Yeah, it's abbreviation. <laughs> Rube, as he was called, was not the only criminal in the family. After fighting with the Alabama Calvary in the Civil War, Allen returned to, to farm, but also operated an illegal moonshine business. He would be indicted in 1876 for illicit distilling, disappearing for a few years before cutting a deal that allowed him to return. This is his pops? This is his pops. Okay. So even the, even his, the pops is in his His dad's a classic, uh, classic criminal. Oh. Moonshine. Yeah. This is so romantic to even hear the word. 
You know? I'll moon your shine. I knew you would turn that into <laughs> something to do with my tuchus. There are conflicting accounts of Rube's youth. One story alleges that at 15 years old, he grabbed his shotgun, put a bag over his head with holes cut for eyes, <laughs> and robbed one of his neighbors. This is terrifying. According to the story, the neighbor knew it was Rube and told his dad. It's the purge! <laughs> You don't know me. You never heard of me before. I'm doing the purge. The purge is just what the rest of life was. Like the purge is just <laughs> anything before 1892. Everything was just purge. The whole thing. Like you just you like okay. Tell me you live in the Scottish Highlands in the year 1215, the, there had, and it wasn't just the purge in general. No, I have to go with the nerdy. Uh, what are those people like the Atlantic people? Like there were civilizations before our times. There has to have been a time in history where it was fucking awesome. I I just I know it has to have been. I no, could like be, certain I, that places like totally were pretty statement. cool. And I'm saying, and I'm like, John, you're an idiot. You don't understand science or evolution. But still. I know it was awesome. Yeah, there had to have a part where people were just like fucking in these crazy groups and they just ate like, you know, like carrots and like potatoes and, and maybe like the occasional deer. I love the, your description and, of awesome. They were fucking and then vegetables of different types. <laughs> and just well, like simple stuff, hey, you know. Hey, Venison? Hey, yeah. Hey, look, look, pussy and produce are progress. You know what I mean? <laughs> is like, that your is that your campaign platform? Yeah, so, I was thinking the same thing. I was like, he's really got a good political angle to this. <laughs> Triple P's, everybody. That's, <laughs> that's what hey, you know. P, that's really Pussy memorable. Produce dude. progress. Yeah. You, can, you can almost go around to schools and tell kids about this uh, plan, but no, I don't think so. You might, might have well, to turn it into double well, P's. Well, for kids, it's prophylactics, produce, and products, and then they get eighteen. And it's prophylactic for is that is that for boner or is that for blood or is that what is prophylactic? Prophylactic is like a, a wiener. That's a condom. A, a wiener holder. A prophylactic is a condom. It's a condom, okay. And this is why John has a child. No, I, my child is <laughs> my child is planned. Rube's dad whooped his ass and How made him return the money. Guys. Rube's dad. Well, John's dad boy. didn't tell him what a prophylactic was. True or not? <laughs> How? T- okay. Rube spent the next sixteen years living mostly within the law. Around 1872, he followed a common path for men of his era and headed west for Texas, working for a brief time on a ranch owned by his uncle. So, so he left the purge to go to the super purge. Yeah, there was yeah. never a time that Texas wasn't worse than everywhere. He's like, there as was. Far as like, <laughs> I'll leave it. I'll leave it alone. Texas comes up on this. You know, you think for a crime show, we talk about Florida way more than we talk about any other state, but Texas has Texas been a comes up. Well, yeah, yeah Texas is a wild. It's the, it's a wild spot, isn't it? Well, especially at the time period, like between eighteen whatever and eighteen whatever. Texas is the shit where all the shit's happening. Well, yeah. Armed iconoclasts is always a recipe for terror. You know what I mean? Like, I'm an individual. I'm rugged. And I'm armed. That's always going to end weird. Well, especially when you're like, and most of the time, I'm in a place where no one will know what happens. (laughs) Yeah, that's true, too. It's like that small percentage, though, of people doing that stuff that ruins it for people that are like, ah, it's really nice and relaxing to be in this area where nothing's going on. Yeah. They're like, except for my neighbors are excited to be here because they can murder me and no one will hear. Dude, I, that's the main reason why I don't think I'll ever move to the country is because like, if somebody murders me in the city, yeah. they'll probably get caught. If they murder me in the country, nobody's going to find out. It's a fucking but what, asshole. Statistically, though, you probably have a better, like, longer, healthier life in the country, I even know, with that's that. that's the crazy like, part. Not that many people get murdered. I'm worried about being murdered so much that, that I would, bad? Ra- I would rather rather be murdered in a place where they would find my killer. Is this is being on the show going to give you post traumatic stress disorder? I mean, this is about crime, dude. <laughs> this is about well, I mean, crime. <laughs> I mean, so far hey, all we he did was at that. so yeah, far all did. he did was teach people bad words and do a really like a what what would be a Andy Griffith episode. I mean, they, robbing somebody that knows it's you is like, yeah. it's almost like not robbing somebody. It's well, like, it's it's still pretty. We're in luck because there's it's embarrassing. It's there's embarrassing a lot more. It's more like, embarrassing. This is what I do. I rob. You know me now. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. You see me go outside to grab the paper for my dad on Sunday, and then you also see me rob. <laughs> John, will you please stop robbing me? This is really frustrating me right now. Well, you think you're frustrated? I'm, I I was comfortable being a robber for a while, and now you know who I am. Yeah, yeah, I knew who you were the whole time. It's very dis- disconcerting. Why is Rube robbing you? Why is Rube over there, Rob? Why does he got a bag on his head? It's not. I'm not Rube. They're mistaking me for someone else. You, you sound just like him. Yeah, you also are wearing his pants. I robbed him before I started this robbery for his pants. Just his pants, specifically. Also, his shirt and his tattoos. All right. Don't tell my parents. A few years later, <laughs> Rube married Kata Alverson, who was also from a family of 10 children. They popped out a couple kids of their own, and Rube worked hard to support his family as a farmer and cattle herder. Rube's brother Jim eventually joined him in Texas. <laughs> you like that little cow, didn't you? Yeah, I did. Okay. 
It was really hot. Thank you. Reports really on Jim's youth are sketchy, but one story has him facing a stabbing charge near Fort Worth. <laughs> His defense lawyer tried to prove that Jim didn't do it by having a witness for the prosecution act out the stabbing on the lawyer's own chest. Oh my god! The witness obliged by beating the shit out of the lawyer's body it, in the in the court in the courtroom. He's like, "Well, here's how I can prove that this stabbing didn't happen. Why don't you come and fake stab me?" And the guy just goes and goes, "Okay, fine," and then just wails on his chest. Wow! And he's like, "Okay, yeah, no, I think it's real." And the jury convicted him, but then Jim uh, fled town. Jim escaped. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't know how he escaped specifically, but he escaped. Wait, this is Rube's kid. This is Rube's brother. Rube's brother. Rube, one, one of he's you know Rube's one of ten children. Yeah, yeah. You're telling these alligator stories. Everybody's yeah. got ten siblings and shit. Yeah, yeah. It's the old days. You had to have a lot everyone of kids. in the story has ten children. You had to alligator stories. I've never heard that. Well, before. alligators have like a million kids. So you know, you're just like, how many kids are you gonna have? Alligators that's, like that's, in the wild. The that's survival the rate. The animal similar. you think of that has a bunch of kids, though. I mean, there's rabbits. There's snakes. There's there's so many snakes. I mean, there's so Dogs. many animals. I can think Pants. of before alligators. That's so weird. I, know, I just always imagine alligators. I just remember being a kid and being like, man, alligators have a lot of kids. Squids. Why? Shrimp. Shrimp. Are you doing Bubba Gump? Are you giving us hard science facts? God damn it. Turtles. <laughs> He's still going through. Shrimp cocktail. Jim arrived on Rube's farm around 1876, and the brothers got to work growing the business. But things took a turn in 1881 with the death of Rube's wife. Ah, oh, Jesus. Burrow took his kids back to Alabama, dropped them off with family, and soon headed back west, where he eventually married Adeline Hoover, who was also one of ten children. That's what dropping off what? kids in the old days was like. You were gone for like six months, and then you married someone. Just yeah, to drop them off at their parents' house for a bit. Hey, can you watch the guys for a minute? I need to go to a different yeah. state. I just I'm going through the same thing with my baby. I was just asking my mom and dad, "Hey, I got the stuff I got to do this day. Can you be there?" But now in those days, they like write a letter with like ink and blood and like that wax stamp, and then they get on their horse. People die along the way. <laughs> I only have two kids to drop off, Ma. It's been a long Oregon trail. I'm just gonna go to this Phil Collins concert. I'll pick them up in a couple years. <laughs> The marriage didn't last long, and they were soon separated. Yeah, because he just wanted some fucking some some cooter. Yeah, he just wanted to get in there real quick. Yeah, that's that's how that's bad marriage is. Well, they didn't call it a rebound in 1850 or 60, whatever the fuck. Yeah, but that's what it was. It yeah. was a rebound. Well, because it took it took so long. Right, Your rebound wasn't like a weekend thing. It was like during that whole journey of. You know. well, is that rebound with two D's? That's right. That's <laughs> rebounded. <laughs> that's how his dad wrote it in his journal. And my son was dealing with a rebound. R e b o u n double d. I like like I, I love I love the number three though. I like three for a lot of stuff. Three. Yeah. Seems like a lot. I, I would spell that L O O O T. Loot. In my head, it's lot. That's fair. <laughs> It was around this time that Rube and Jim first assembled their team of outlaws. They were joined by two men, Henderson Brumley and Napoleon Bonaparte Thornton. That's a cool name. Well, I, I think every single low-class piece of shit mm -hmm. can name their kid anything they want. So, like, super great names are handed down to such pieces of shit. It's ridiculous. Yep. There's, there's a John Julius F. Caesar Jenkins. Yeah, there's a, there's a John F. Kennedy <laughs> Wilson in jail right now. That's hilarious. But is there an Ed Greer and a Rich Slayton in jail anywhere? I'm sure there is at least one Rich Slayton in jail. You think so? I know there's a Rich Slayton who's a, a kid who's a Niners fan up in the Bay Area, and there's a Rick Slayton who's a mixed martial arts fighter, which makes it very weird that I do MMA commentary. Interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's a conflict of interest. He, he, but he goes hard CK, Rick, as opposed to Rich. One of y'all motherfuckers has to die. Probably me, because he's a professional fighter, and <laughs> yeah, I tell what, dick what jokes. If, what if you like ran him over or something? Doesn't that's matter. a good That's a good point. <laughs> How good of a fighter are you? Can you fight my Chevy? <laughs> uh, he studies at the V8 Dojo. <laughs> this guy. And then you throw a yarmulke on his dead body. Here, here's a yarmulke. Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> keep keep for the change. Keep for the change. <laughs> Yeah, keep her, keep her in touch. She's just got a bunch of puns in it. <laughs> oh, dude, a Jewish action hero. Oh, dude, he, just, keep he tosses keepers on dead bodies. Uh, <laughs> do you feel lucky, like my parents were, to get out of Germany before the Holocaust? He, he, <laughs> he goes in. He goes in and does the shit like the guy from uh, what was it No Country for Old Men? Which one is it? Where the fucking uh, Shigur, the oh. bad guy. Who's the guy with that uses the air pump thing? Yeah, that's Shigur. Oh, yeah. was that No Country? Yeah, yeah, dude. But he does it instead of a coin. He brings a dreidel. <laughs> And spins it, <laughs> and then like, how it falls, like, uh, do you feel? Do you feel lucky, boy? 
Yeah. Goy? Oh, he's a <laughs> condescending Jew? Come on, man. Jude. L- listeners that don't know, Goy is like a it's like a mean but not mean way. Like it's endearing, but it's also just a kind of sloppy. Like I always felt like it was a little condescending. Like, oh, he's a goy. Like you know that like some Jewish people are like, he's a goy, he's less than me because he's not one of the chosen people. Mm-hmm. He's worshiping the wrong god. But uh, you know, it's just a Jewy fun thing, isn't it, Rich? I like it. Like to say goy? It's like I it, love saying you it. can say it in a friendly way, but it's also got a funny like Goyish. Oh, you're a goy. You know, Goyisha. What do Scientologists call non Scientologist people? Humans. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're an unupgraded human. Yes, yes. No problem. We can still have lunch. Why would I want to have lunch with you? You're very, you're really creeping me out. Why are you standing so close? Why are you making me hold tin cans? You said leave? you wanted to test your personality. This, I mean, talking to you is a test of personality on its own, to be honest. Please do not walk away from me. I already have a pair of black slacks and an I'm, Air I'm, Force button up shirt that you can wear. Please let go of my belt. I'm trying to walk away right now. I've got a new belt for you. It's plain and black and it's from Mervyn's. I forgot where we were in the paper. Hold on. Oh, I was like, this is going to be huge. <laughs> <laughs> He's really building this one up for some build. I was yeah. trying to figure out Whoa, <laughs> what's going to happen? Uh, oh, yeah. But the letdown was a huge build up, too. Like in the graph. It still went this way, but it still was a big change. Uh, Brumley, Henderson Brumley, had served in the Texas Cavalry during the Civil War, where he mostly killed Native Americans. Ah, oh, wow. Sounds like a good chap. After the war, he settled down on a farm re- with his wife where they had 10 kids. Oh, yes. Yeah, get on top of me and ride me like I rode that culture into the ground. He occasionally served as a Texas Ranger Minuteman and killed more Native Americans. Oh, my God. Well, the, that was, to be fair, that was an actual, like, job opportunity back then. I oh, mean, you're too nice. It's still it's scary. Fa- it's factory work. Yeah. It was the factory work of its day. Or it's just, yeah, it's just like now doing stuff that you're like, oh, it's kind of weird the way you slaughter that animal or whatever, but you just got to do it. It's a job, hey, right? you know, this, an- this animal prays for rain and dances. What the fuck am I going to oh, do? Oh, that's so weird. That was the time when <laughs> things were dehumanized when they were from a different culture from you. You're yep. like, you're both humans. You're both intelligent people. Nope, I've been trained to think that that one is doing this and that one's doing mm. that. Yeah, that's crazy. It's Napoleon good. Bonaparte Thornton, or Nep, as his friends called him for some weird reason. Nep. Because hey, they didn't Nep. want to say all that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I call him Nap. <laughs> hey, Nappy! <laughs> that's not my, my name's Nep! <laughs> yeah, he's a criminal, too, so if I called him the wrong name, he'd probably kick my ass. Nep only had four children, but he also sometimes killed Native Americans. So, you know, good on you, Nep. It's so weird. That, like, specifically Native Americans. This is what he did sometimes. They should have shown those people dances with wolves. <laughs> They, and then they're like, they try to shoot the screen because no, they're like, no, what they, is it? What are you doing? No, they might <laughs> have some magic. They might have had some empathy. You know, you see Dance of the Wolves, you're like, this is a, this is a whole other people. They're or just they like, would have, just like me. or they would have been angry at the race trader. That's another pod. That's the that more likely weird. possibility. If, if that, that's a good like, what do you call it? Like a good personality test to find out like how far along you're the racist that you're trying to like, so, you know, psychologically train out of racism is doing. Like you would test them and be like, all right, this is the dances with wolves test, and it just has two questions. Dance with wolves, more like dances with the enemy. Yeah, it, it, that's the two questions. It's like, does it are, are at the by the end of the movie how you feel? And one of them, one of them is what what you just said. Yeah, you know. The Native American murder expertise of Nep and Brumley may explain the gang's first failed attempt at a job. Nep and Brumley sounds like a really cool law firm. I'd trust them to deal my case. <laughs> Watch that. <laughs> if they were successful criminals, they, they their sons and daughters would be, but I guess they're not from this story. But you don't want him to walk in with some like goofy-ass voice and like, Hello, sir! I'm your attorney, Nep, and this is my friend Brumley. I imagine two like really Jewy, like just but dorky like guys fucking popping up. Well, we're here to help you out with your yeah, yeah. with your case. My name's Nep. This is my friend Brumley. And this is after me like seeing the commercial on TV, like while I'm sitting in the cell, like call Nep and Brumley. We've helped many people almost get out of jail. <laughs> <laughs> Nearly, but not quite. Brumley sounds like he would be played by like a cartoon walrus, like Brumley. Brum, yeah, maybe Brumley. it's like Brumley. That's maybe I'm thinking Wilford Brumley. Wilford Brumley? The Brumley. Yeah. So like I think I think the walrus Brumley, of diabetes. Yeah, Brumley would look like Wil, Wil, uh, Br- Brumley. How how would he sound? I feel like he has a deep voice like this. Hi, I'm Wilford Brumley. I'm here to help you out. My name's Brumley. And I'm your attorney now. I, Everyone's got to do their best Brumley. Uh, I, I, well, you got to like pull your mustache over your mouth. When All you're right. Doing it. Okay. It's, it's like a. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's how he sounds. I don't know all the that, words. But that's also what but he that's says. How he no, that's, that's, yeah. that's, and it's just, it's, just, it's just subtitles under the screen whenever he talks. Order yeah. in the court. <laughs> order in the court. The chair now, the, the jur- judge now going to recognize the defense attorney, Mr. Brumley. Brumley, why don't you come out here and make your case? 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> He's right, damn it. We have to overturn this. <laughs> Not guilty, declared. <laughs> Um, um uh, I'm the uh, as your prosecutor, I just want to point out he said zero words. Probably, yeah. <laughs> yes. It, am I insane? Is everyone else here hearing what I'm hearing? We're hearing the same thing as you were hearing the most poignant speaker of our time. Yo, know, you better watch yourself. I'll hold you in contempt of court, boy. I, I just want him to say a word that's in a language. That's all I really need. Well, go ahead, Brumley. Ma, 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 ma. See? I'll admit that one sounded a little jumbled, but that's only because his beautiful mustache was supporting his upper chin. Or whatever you call that thing. <laughs> lip. The upper chin. Yeah, uh, lip. <laughs> his upper chin. Hey, I didn't claim to be a um, you know, doctor or anything like that. I'm not a I don't know anatomy. The Native American murder <laughs> upper expertise. Chin. <laughs> the chin on top of the chin, you know, where the top of the face comes in. <laughs> the thing that the nose sits on. You know, there's, there's there's two chins. They cover your teeth. Yeah. Your tongue goes through your chins. Kid, you know the chin that uh, goes on underneath your eyes and the chin on top of your eyebrows. I see through my top nipples. <laughs> <laughs> your top nipples? That one's pretty good. Your top balls? Your, yeah. Your sea balls? My face balls are what I look through. Why would you want to poke me in them? Please don't grab my arm foot. <laughs> My arm is your hand? Yeah. That's fucking funny, dude. My friend Shop. Oh, yeah. Okay. John Shop, if you're listening to this, we're doing the arm foot. Go on. All right. Arm foot it is. He'll, he'll understand. The Native American murder expertise of Nep and Brumley may explain the gang's first failed attempt at a job. The men rode into Native territory, now called Oklahoma, to rob a wealthy Native American woman. She fought them off and they returned to Texas empty handed. Having failed to successfully rob one woman by herself in the wilderness, the team set their sights on a more sensible endeavor, train robbery. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we couldn't handle taking a woman's money. And no offense to ladies listening, we're talking, you know, this is a strong woman. But we're just saying, he couldn't have kicked her in the pussy, smacked those titties and taken what he wanted. Am I right, guys? <laughs> well, the, the Oklahoma what, titty smack. What if that was his, his robbing technique? And it's when goes, whack, slap, give me your cash. <laughs> That's a good dance, too. <laughs> whack, slap, give me your cash. Whack, slap, give me your cash. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's, it's too fucking sad that uh, that would be a hit right James now. Brown. Ah! <laughs> whack, slap, give me your cash. I'm taking what I want. Whack, slap. Yeah. I mean, and then I'll give away. Hey, kid. <laughs> And get, then I'll give a sack. Get James Brown on the phone. Now give me your cash. Uh. You give me your cash. Uh. Hit, dude. Trap <laughs> music, bitch. At 11.30 a.m. on December 11th, 1886. Oh, December 11th. Oh, no. That's, yeah, it's cool. It's cool. That's a, that's a fine date. <laughs> oh, December 11th. We have when... a shrine that we point to. <laughs> and then we come back. The Denver-Fort Worth Express stopped in Bellevue, a small watering station. Three cowboys approached the engine, pulled out revolvers, and ordered the operators off the train. They relieved the men of their watches and cash, then lined <laughs> them up in the train. That's a pretty friendly term. Oh, now I don't have to worry about my cash anymore. I I'm so relieved. <laughs> oh. Thank you for taking that responsibility off my back. My back was hurting so bad, and I really, like, <laughs> thank you so much. My wrist. Oh, my This gentleman with the black mask. I'm starting to get a shoulder problem. Oh. This is a classic train robbery that we're listening to right now. Oh, yes. This is awesome. Uh, the robbers then <laughs> went down <laughs> the train. <laughs> the robbers... <laughs> <laughs> I and like, hate you so much. And, I hate and, you so much. I hate you so much. And it's watching me bully fucking Rich, but that was too fun. <laughs> uh, the robbers are. Um, uh, where was I? Uh, yeah, what would they... <laughs> the robbers then went down the train, yes. <laughs> taking uh, jewelry and cash from the passengers. <laughs> At first, they searched every man on the train, but they were soon bored by the search and asked everyone to turn over their valuables. Of course, the passengers quickly began to hide everything. A passenger named Tom Wagoner had $400 and, ex and, a, and an expensive pin. So he turned to the young lady next to him and asked her to hide his stuff. She asked him how. He blushed and replied, put them in your stockings. In the end, he only lost 25 cents to the robbers. Okay. What, what? Well, wait, wait. So, so he told the TMZ of his day that he did that? That's the only way we know. Yeah, how do we know yeah. this? That's oh yeah, this, the only well, way. remember this is in this is in the late 1800s. So newspapers had ads in them. Like we're not, yeah. we're not, we're not sending smoke signals. And, and, none of these parchment. Yeah, 
the printing press has been invented. Newspapers I, are, are. I was not confused about that at all, Dick Face. I'm just saying the uh, the whole situation of like. Yeah, that's that's his that's his hot story. That was his like Sully Sullenberger. It's like, hey, this fucking robber comes on the train, right? He's he's chasing asking everybody for the stuff, but they were like lazy robbers or something. So like so like when they get to me, I already hid my shit in this bitch's stockings. I'm the shit, right? Fifteen minutes of fame. Yes, that's just funny. History. To me. That's how it happens. Aren't bro. you supposed <laughs> to just give them all your shit because it's just material goods so that they don't kill you? But these robbers were in the old days where they just nice, where they're like yeah, they stick then, to their word. Most and, of your shit was in <clears> your like. You didn't have a bank and a Wells Fargo card. You didn't just go, oh, I can get some cash out at the ATM. Yeah. You carried all your shit on you practically. Yeah. So you're going from play, from point A to point B. You're like, like getting robbed could ruin your life. Getting robbed could be all your things. But I still would rather, you know, not get shot, especially in the old days shot. You ever see Dances with Wolves? Yeah. <laughs> And cool they, bake. And they didn't either. They, 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 they should have. Am I right? Have I ever told you guys about my theory of making people watch Dances with Wolves? No, <laughs> It'll change the world. The gang was so unintimidating that one woman yelled out, Is there not a man in this coach <laughs> with bravery enough to raise a finger? Right to their face? Oh, that's so fucking... As, as a the, robber, you just like, God damn, we are losers. As a, I, I know the dudes on the train are like, this fucking bitch about to get some motherfucking shot. As the passengers all stood with their hands in the air, a man in the back replied, Yes, ma'am, every man in this car is brave enough to raise all ten fingers. <laughs> so there's a fucking comedy in there. He's all, yeah. roast culture. How you guys doing tonight? I'll be playing at the tavern down the street. Yeah, that's a nice tag. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> in the end... <laughs> The Burrow gang left the train with a couple hundred dollars in cash, plus a few watches and pistols. That is good, though, right? In those days? A later accounting showed their laziness caused them to leave behind around $12,000. Oh, interesting. Today, the equivalent of twenty of $290,000. Oh, wow. So they, they're dumb as fuck. They're dumb as fuck. They super fucked up because they were like, fuck, I don't want to search all you guys. Ugh. How can you be bad? Yeah, I guess you could be bad at anything, right? You'd be like, I'm a broke robber. I made more when I was a comic. Like, like, <laughs> well, a lazy robber to me doesn't seem like too big of a stretch. I mean, they're robbers. They don't want to go out and work for it, so they got to rob. You're generalizing. Whatever. Ed, let me tell you something. There are robbers out there that wake up at 6 a.m. <laughs> do, do 100 push-ups right. so they can climb walls. That's right. They check their emails. You do your gun-ups, right? <laughs> Raise your guns, get those guns ready. That's right. Dude, that'd be, that would be a funny like uh, criminal exercise. Like you hold like a can of soup in your hand, fully full extension for like hours, so that you raise your gun without it <laughs> and shaking in people's camp? faces. Yeah, yeah. So, the, my gun used to shake in people's faces. They wouldn't give me all the cash, so I started working out with Campbell's soup cans, and now I can hold my gun in your face steady as a. You watch like P ninety X, like uh, like <laughs> robbery edition. <laughs> Rob ninety X. Yeah, it's really good. They do these ladder climbs, and you go through these windows. It's really good for your knees. A haphazard manhunt followed the robbery. That's a good name for a band, haphazard manhunt. Oh, dude, they're opening up for one of my other favorite bands. Jews. <laughs> that is actually my favorite band. That'd be a great name for a band. <laughs> Jews. Jews. But it has two, has three O's. Jews. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. I, I was thinking uh, J E W Z, but that's just me being kind of hipster because uh, no, was, no, you're you're doing the. You're, I was doing the hipster thing. J triple O S. Okay. That is like a band. So that was where like you have a bunch of Jews who oh. play fiddle instruments. Yeah. J E W Z is like too bad, like a bad Jewish rap group. That's trying to be like hardcore, but they ride they ride know. crotch rockets. I, I think the super real hipster way to do it would be J U Z. S oh. No, J U S with a ulat above the U. Ooh. That's true. He knows. Blue hipster. Ed watches culture with a magnifying glass and with um, like a big uh, perspective. There'd be an E. Jews. J umlaut U S E because it that would be juice. Jews. Any we're gonna Jews. go to the band Jows, and like you're on stage, you're like we're called Jews. That's what we were excited about with the name. We're not Jows. <laughs> Guys! There's <laughs> like eight people at a Bringer music show. After Haphazard Manhunt played their opening gig, that turned into what they did to follow the robbery. Since the robbers included men with black, brown, and blonde hair, the posse simply arrested any man they found. A man named Dick Shepard was held for a month before witnesses were brought in to determine he was not one of the robbers. Stop holding on to Dick! If you know what I'm saying. I hold on to it all day. Yeah, you look like a Dick Shepard. Yeah, Dick Shepard. <laughs> And the Dick Shepherd shall lead you to Dick, whatever. You look, you look like you round up dicks and put them in a pen. <laughs> That's where I keep them. I'm not sure I understand your <laughs> disc. <good sir. laughs> and, <then, laughs> and then later, you shave those dicks, and then some of the smaller dicks you kill and make <laughs> veal out of. Oh God! What if Dick was that good, and then you had to like protect your? <laughs> Ooh boy! What if you like? What if we we're like? 
So what if, what if we're all albinos in Africa? I was just going to say, if you're like Nate, Nate, yeah. Hurd, Nate Hurd is our albino friend, and he, uh, you have to, you have to he survived, luckily. But there's still, even to this day, I, I, know, I know this podcast is getting very serious by the second now, but every day they're killing, in Africa, I mean, which is a huge continent, but in some place over there in some city, they're killing albinos because they still think that they're like, um, like demons or whatever. And also, don't they make your dick harder? If you eat if you them? grind them up and you eat grind them, them up and eat them or something like yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Uh, but no, they're like ri- they're like rhino horns. That's you rhinos. Are, you're, they're you're so stupid. You're part of the problem. Albinos, rhinos. You're, you're part of the problem. I think I think I see what's going on here. <laughs> if you're doing rails, <laughs> if you're doing rails of ground up albino ashes, you're part of the problem. I'm just saying. <laughs> you're part of it. That's right. You're part of it. <laughs> you're not the whole problem. <laughs> oh, okay. You're the whole problem. <laughs> Yeah, bro, could... I got the best. Uh, I got the best albino right now. Come on, you want to go? Oh, it's so gross. Do you party? You party, girl? Hey, get hey, hey, albino hey, bacon. Hey, oh, guys, it's healthier guys, for you. It's got guys, less fat. Hey, guys, don't buy from that fucking guy. That half a fag over there. He sells me this albino. I take it home. Talcum powder. This guy sells me talcum powder. <laughs> it's not albino. What? At all. It's white. He did that to me. I had a nosebleed for three days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I say, I, I say, blame you guys. You guys are the ones who, who, who took the product. All I said was, hey, look, this stuff will make you... Did, here's the question. Did your dick get hot or not? You can't let the market decide. I'm just saying. You, sometimes you got to have some laws because people will buy whatever. Papers covered the robbery and noted that not only did the gang fail to note to collect a small fortune from the passengers, they also neglected to raid the express and mail cars, which often carried more cash and valuables. Taking heed of the constructive criticism, the gang carefully planned their next heist. At 2.28 a.m. on January 23rd, 1887, the Texas eastbound Texas and Pacific train slowed, preparing to stop in Gordon for a refuel. Two masked men jumped aboard the engine, pulled out pistols, and ordered the conductor to keep going. As the train crossed a high bridge, the gunman ordered the conductor to stop at a pile of rocks, blocking the tracks. The front part of the train was on land, while the passengers were stuck on the bridge, unable to escape. I was like, this is a badass classic thing. It's even funnier, though, because you know these guys are, like, uh, incompetent. So it's like, it's fun that there's, like, a bridge and there's Well, they were open up. micers, and now they're graduating to, well, yeah, like, the, this headline is level the, yeah, this train is them, Yeah, this is them featuring for somebody that they're so, going to brag about on Instagram. So they, uh, that's a funny reference. Uh, uh, for all of our listeners who are just comedians, uh, that, there you go. That's yeah, got you. one for you. <laughs> <laughs> a little, little hind inside on you, huh? Step off the plate or you'll get hit. <laughs> I love, I love how inside baseball is a term for stuff that's inside. When you have to like like baseball to even know it's like an inside inside of an inside. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It's like an insider way to describe an insider thing. It's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. It's like it's, talking about Willie Nelson. It's on like stage. a Russian it's like a Russian doll of, of a reference there. More masked men jumped on the train, followed by an unmasked Rube Burrow. First they shot their way into the express car and forced the agent to open the safe. Ooh, so now they're firing off bullets. They're not fucking around anymore, bitch. Yeah, here's okay, so they go back after the last robbery and they have like a whiteboard and they're like drawings of all like biggest problem, uh, we were morons. And then they explain what they do. Like, and you know what else? I didn't fire my fucking gun. Hey boss, I have a question for you. What? Uh should we take the money? I'm pretty sure, but we'll figure that out if we take care of these initial things I want. Oh, to- another quite follow up question. Okay, what? what what about jewelry? I mean, you know, uh, grab it. I don't really want to wait around long, and I really don't want to, have to ask people right, to take th- it off. Next question. What about shoes? I, mean, I, I got my enough shoes, but if you want more shoes, grab a pair. Can I grab lady shoes? Yeah, what the hell are you going to do with lady shoes? I don't know. Whatever, man. It's like, it's like lady shoes. They're comfortable. All right. I'm down with individuality. Take what you need to take. But anyways, I don't want to open doors with my hands anymore. That's rule number one. I'm going to shoot through them. Well, if we have shoes, I can use my feet. So, okay, you can take the shoes if you want. You're, really not, all I want you're shoes. not putting That's on all, high only... heels and then trying to kick a door down. Can I have I'm your a... shoes real quick? You really got to work on your fetishes. They smell good. Okay, here. <laughs> um, I feel like you guys are othering criminals by making them fetishists. We're going to do that scene again <laughs> without othering anybody, okay? We're going to be inclusive of the fetish, but we're not going to make fun of it. All right, go. Um... Hmm. We've got to rob this train. Yeah. Well, I will rob it using my weapon, correct? Yes, of course. I was almost going to call you a bad name, but then I realized that would hurt the fairer sex's feelings. Now, we don't now, ever want to do that intentionally. Here's an important question about this robbery. Yes. We want to take the guns and the cash, correct? Yes. We'll use our weapons to do that. Yes. Do I get to keep the shoes? 
You may keep the shoes. All the shoes. I wouldn't have it any other way. Especially the women's shoes. Especially the women's shoes. Because women have beautiful shoes. Let's I'm on board. Let's do this. this. See? 100% improvement. SJW. All the way. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Once they cleared the cash out of the express car, they had the conductor move the train forward just enough to bring the mail car on land. It's called the just the tip move. Right? Just the tip of the train. Just the tip of the train. The train's just like a giant penis. Just the tip of the train sounds like you're getting gangbanged by eight dudes who are all only putting their tip in. Like you're holding just the tip of their dicks. <laughs> That's an interesting and, fetish. Yeah. Just the tip bang. That yeah. sounds actually pretty hot now you're just talking about it, describing it. Wow, that sounds like chopstick porn. What's that mean? I've never heard that term. I think Whoa. I, just, I, I think I just made that up. But like, you know, like to hold to hold the tips of people's dicks, you'd like take chopsticks and just... Like, that yeah. seems reasonable. Clap it on the, the ends and then stuff like that. Yeah. And then bring it up to your mouth like a, some With a chopstick. Dip. Yeah. The postal clerks only S- had... S- S- suck me? What would they call that Ooh. movie? Um, all you can eat sushi pussy? Uh <sighs> Mm. Roll. Fucking on rice and rolled up in seaweed with the dick. <laughs> spicy. Is that a good name of a porn? Uh, spicy mayo. A hand roll. <laughs> it's, it's just all called spicy Sloppy mayo. Hand, hand just, roll, hand job rolls. Spicy mayo. Oh, spicy. I love spicy mayo. Yeah, see? Spicy mayo. What spicy mayo it's... volumes one through one billion. That's how Oh, yeah, yeah. Powerful. Spicy mayo 17. Oh, dude. that's That was a good episode. The postal clerks yes. only had one pistol with two bullets. So they quickly opened the door and let the bandits in. <laughs> they quickly opened it too. Just, 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 let's get this over with. When the door opened, Rube held it out his hand to Richard Griffin, one of the postal agents, and made the clerk pull him up into the car. Aww. So you're not only getting robbed, but you're like, can you help me in there so I can rob you? This is the same crew that on the last robbery, people were like super in their face, like like pretty confident to just be like, will someone stop these morons? Like right to their face. Well, t- yeah. this time they shot up people though. Yeah. I mean, you know, yeah. They, sh- they shot them up. That's what I'm saying. It's like, this is a huge improvement on their great. <laughs> they took, their, they took the notes, used whatever. them. Yeah, they're really. This train also carried a few soldiers and a Dallas County sheriff transporting a prisoner. The sheriff went to confront the bandits while the soldiers said, fuck this, and headed for the back of the train. Well, that's funny. He fired a pair of shots toward the forward cars, but quickly retreated from the return fire. This time, the robbers made off with thousands of dollars rather than hundreds. Now, the U.S. Marshals got involved as robbing a mail car was a federal crime. Marshal Ben Cable put together a posse and headed to Gordon with bloodhounds ready to track the culprits. First, they found John Houston, a basic-looking 25-year-old. The mail agent from the train said he might be the guy who robbed him. So they arrested him. Next, they found Robert Settle. Is that Settle. easy? Oh, well, they just... You'll see here in a second what's going on. Next, they found Robert Settle. The arresting marshal was not certain whether he was the right man, but they arrested him because he had $210. Three more men, John Oxford, Sam Beal, and Ike Clark, were arrested when buggy tracks were found from the train bridge to Oxford's house 37 miles away. While Beale and Clark were eventually released, Settle, Oxford, and Houston were all held, despite plenty of evidence for their alibis and no evidence they possessed any of the stolen money. So they already had the Patriot Act back then, huh? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's the thing. I, if you want to argue that point, the fact that they didn't have the Patriot Act at that point, fuck these guys, because these guys would have been on a billion CCTV things, a bunch of facial recognition software, ATM cameras, all kind of shit to know that they weren't robbing this fucking train. But because of none Wait, of Wait, are you saying that the police thing, state makes you safer? Uh, no, it would have made those dudes safer, which is the argument for the police state. Interesting. It would have empirically made those dudes safer. Interesting. John, I think that we need to leave now. I know. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah, dun, 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 seriously. Dun, 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 I'm not an agent that is posing to be your guys' friend and try to indoctrinate you into the Big Brother. You need it all the way into my wedding. I just, I, I feel like you guys are impugning my friendship. I don't let him this close. Just because of my training doesn't mean... And, and I know that I haven't had a job in like four years, but I still have managed to survive in California. That should not arouse any suspicions. All of this is very suspicious. I Michael Bay need... soundtrack. Michael Bay uh, trailer sound. J.J. <laughs> <laughs> Abrams lens flare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a there's a there's a J.J. Abrams lens flare off my glasses. Yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, that's a nerdy fantasy right there. Huh? <laughs> I just want to see a lens flare off my glasses. <laughs> Meanwhile, 
The Burroughs were enjoying the fruits of their labors. Jim bought some land, and the brothers purchased livestock and spent some time farming. But farm life would prove too boring for the boys now that they had a real taste of adventure. Wait, so they didn't get in trouble? No. All those guys got arrested were not any of the robbers. None of them. They were just guys who existed. Wow. So they, they and they're all doing that. You got the wrong guy. And they're all saying, yeah, everyone says that. And everyone says that. They really yeah, did. but I don't have any of the money on me. Yeah, well, everyone says that, too. Interesting. Interessant. Uh, like farm life was too, was too boring. Rube's letters home to Alabama showed that not only was he over farming, but his new wife as well. In one letter, he asked his mom, quote, to pick me out one of the prettiest widows in Alabama, I will come home this fall. I don't want to plow anything. Now, I want to just point out the spelling here. <laughs> T-O-O, pick M-E-E, out one of the P-R-I-T-Y-E-S-T widows in Alabama. I will come home this F-A-W-L. Woo, that's it. <laughs> Back then, spelling was just like, oh, if, if you read this out loud, it will make sense. Yeah. By June 1887, they had a new plan, but Nep Thornton had to care for his sick child, and they needed a fourth man, so they recruited William Brock, an illiterate ranch hand who owned nothing but four cows and five hogs. Oh, sounds like a born robber. At first, Brock wasn't keen on the idea of armed robbery, but eventually they bullied him into joining up. Oh, dude. This time, they rode on stolen horses for Benbrook, Texas. They made camp near town the night before. There they stayed the next day, eating stolen honey and playing seven up to determine who would be the one Is to board the train. Is it a matter engine. of principle with them? Like, uh, you want any honey? No, I'm good, thanks. It's stolen. Yeah, give me a little scoop of that honey. That's their whole thing. Yeah, it's stolen. Hey, come ride with us in the town. I don't want to. These horses are stolen. Ah, oh, shit. Y'all got room for one more? <laughs> like, <laughs> hey, where'd you get those shoes from, man? I stole them. Okay, I'll take them then. Well, you, I stole them. They're mine. Oh, you want a pair, though? Yeah. I got these right here. They're not stolen, though. Oh, they're man's shoes. Ah, I'm done. <laughs> I, we go, my, my wife got a pair of shoes, and she, she, they're hers. Yeah, I want them stolen, though. I'll take them from her. Can I take them from her? Actually, that's a better kind of stealing. Yeah. I'm with it. Go ahead and get them. <laughs> get them? <laughs> get them. <laughs> uh, the men played 7-Up to decide who would be the one to board the train engine and start the heist. Like, heads up 7-Up? I, like I you do when you're a kid in the school. Dude, a the bunch of criminals teacher. with their heads down and <laughs> yeah. their thumbs up. <laughs> yeah. This is a scene from Blazing Saddles 2. It's crazy. Of course, Bill Brock lost. Bill he, Brock, the famous comedian, redhead guy from Boston? No, Bill Brock, the idiot who oh. owns four pigs and three horses. <laughs> or whatever. Sorry about that, Bill. So they, so they got William Money. Yeah. Uh, and they put him on the, the and they're going to make him get on the train. He headed to the train station where he sat and whittled, whittled a <laughs> stick while he waited for its arrival. Thank God for Ed like, being like, what's happening in the actual story? If, uh. you, if you sit and whittle for a long time, there's probably a problem. Do you ever fiddle with your whittle and then, diddle, and then diddle yourself? Yeah, fiddle with my whittle in the middle. And then I diddle. Much back. Unless I got to take a <laughs> shittle, then I got to quiddle. But I'll come right back. I might pancakes on the griddle. <laughs> Crime. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm with you on that. <laughs> that was Rich putting his butthole up to the bike. Just so you guys know. <laughs> <laughs> that is a festive you know thespian weird? of an asshole. My butthole only sucks in. I fart inward only. It's really strange. It's really weird. And then you just burp really weird smelling burps. It's called tra It's called traffing. No, is it really? Yeah, when you fart backwards, it's traff. <laughs> is that really all? Is it really traff? That's all Rich does. You don't fart outwardly at all? I traff all day, son. There's a lot of pleasure in farting. If I couldn't fart, I'd be bummed. This heist went about the same as the last one. Bill boarded the train and made it stop. They raided the express car and then headed to the mail car where they demanded entry. The mail car. How'd you know? I just turned it over. The man inside <laughs> remarked that the voices outside sounded familiar. When the door opened, they found postal agent Richard Griffin. The same guy from the Gordon robbery. What? Again, Rube made Griffin help him into the car, to which Griffin's partner said... That really happens? Like, yeah. you're like, did uh, you rob me before? I did me again? Before. How you been? I've been all right. <laughs> There's more familiar robbery in this story than I've ever heard in my life. Hey, did you... Hey, I know you. You're right. I wrote a sketch with uh, the John Shovel, and it's got, like, a reoccurring character, and we rob him again accidentally. And I was like, that's stupid. That never happens. And I always second-guessed it because of that. I'm like, it's just kind of dumb. Like, what are the odds? And then he said, I'm like, that really happens? Yeah. You robbed the same guy twice? And oh, Rube good, again. Good, what? Sorry. I was, it was, it was, a, it was a, the jumps in the sound. Yeah. 
And again, Rube made Griffin help him into the car. That's so funny. And but this time he didn't have to ask. He already knew his modus operandi. He's like, I got a chocolate donut up here for you too. Uh, at, when he when he held him in, Griffin's partner said, "Quote: This is growing fearfully monotonous." Oh wow! Wow. Oh. I'd be afraid of offending them by saying that. I, I think that was an 1860-something snarky comment. Yeah. yeah. I'd be, this it, is going fearfully monotonous. Isn't it? Like, I, I think I'd be afraid they'd shoot you for saying that. Like, what'd you fucking say about this situation? <laughs> it was furful. furful Did you call what? me a monotonous? Oh, are they dumb as fuck, yeah. dude? Like, I just have nothing to do with monogamy. Give me your shoes. Specifically, uh, oh, no, not uh, you wearing men's shoes. Never mind. Again, a posse rode out, and again, they were stumped by the evasive moves of the Barrow Gang, who had waded up a stream to cover their tracks and scent. By now, the three unsolved train robberies had drawn public interest and scorn. That'd be a great TV show, Unsolved Train Robberies. <laughs> We've got seven episodes. <laughs> we're going to try to stretch them. <laughs> now the law was in a frenzy and began arresting anyone who could even be mistaken for fitting the description. That sounds like the law's getting all hot and heavy. Brothers James and Ben Hughes were arrested, tried, and convicted of the robberies, mostly because they bragged to some ladies about robbing the train in order to impress them. Of course, that didn't stop the law from arresting more people for the same crime. Wait, so they just arrested two guys that bragged about it that did do it? You know, they, they, these two brothers, James and Ben Hughes, had nothing to do with it. Again, this is another group of people that had nothing to do with this. But they told some ladies, yeah, we robbed that train. Trying to get, fuck us trying now? To get, yeah, I was yeah. going to try to get the... Yeah, get dude, that train robber pussy. Yeah, Everybody knows say, about that. Does that make chicks horny? What's the equivalent to that today? NFL football player. Really? I don't know. Oh, I take you very seriously, so you better be careful what you say to me. I was, I was like, yes, I have a fact uh, that Ed presented to me. <laughs> Meanwhile, Rube and company decided to rob another train in Benbrook. They boarded the train and pulled guns on the engineer. When he asked where they wanted him to stop, one replied, quote, at the same place you did before. <laughs> The engineer asked We're kind of regulars here. <laughs> yeah. He puts his gun down. <laughs> they have their name painted in white on the side of the of the train. It's like they see the Goodfellas where like they come in through the back door and they put a fucking table near fucking Johnny Mathis or something. They yeah. do that for these guys, Robert. Like, yeah. hey, come sit next to the mail car. Yeah. I will only have two bullets. You can have them. Yeah. <laughs> Here's a cup of coffee. It's fully orchestrated in a friendly way. Like, let me is... help you up into the. We have a new step stool for robbers that it's we've a... installed in all of our trains. It's just a dance that they do, like a dance that they all come together and do. You know, the engineer and the robbers are here. This is God's play. <laughs> the engineer asked them how much they got from the last robbery. The robbers said, "Quote: We had nothing to do with that affair." When the engineer pointed out that their instructions were about stopping at the same place as last time, they just laughed. <laughs> Ah, uh, you got uh, me. Yeah, that was the us. law can't get me, but you got me. Yeah. They ransacked the train just as before, hitting the express car before making their way to the mail car, where they again found Richard Griffin. What? Who by this point didn't even bother pretending there, to resist. Was there one train in the Wild West? Did no one ever tell me the the funniest <laughs> thing about all this is there's only one train. We're train robbers. What do you rob? The train. Yeah. So, some guy asked me recently, which train? And then they both just start laughing. <laughs> which train? <laughs> oh, dude, which this, one? one train? You know what this was like for that Richard Griffin, whatever the fuck guy? Mm -hmm. This is like uh, his Groundhog's Day. Like he just, <laughs> he just goes to work yeah. and then every fucking thing is like, ah! His wife in the morning is like, this bye, honey. Bye. Enjoy the robbery. <laughs> <laughs> every day. How was the robbery today? It was good. Pretty much standard protocol. Yeah. <laughs> He, w he wakes up to a rendition of I Got You, Babe, on like an old West instrument. There's a bluegrass band out front of his window. I got you, babe. I got you, babe. Sometimes he just fights the robbers until he can get killed. He wakes up, ah, fuck. I yeah. thought I was out. <laughs> He's the guy actually who wrote West. I have died 4,000 times. Between the Burrow Gang and their more violent competitors, train robberies had lost their novelty. The Fort Worth Daily Gazette commented, quote, The train robbing business has become too common for it to form a very interesting subject of conversation. It's like stand-up. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> you know, everybody's uh, cousin's a fucking train robber these days. <laughs> <laughs> like Jesus They're either a train robber A comedian Or they got a screenplay How It's like Jesus Christ yeah. <laughs> How big is this a scene And every town's got a train robbing scene in town It's amazing Last train robber standing Yo, Huge I, I heard he was a big train robber in Portland And he goes down to LA And of course they just give him a show Who gives a fuck about <laughs> It's, but a lot of times, though, you come here from other areas and you're, you were actually working in these other areas robbing trains and you come to L.A. and they won't even let you get, you know... Yeah, to rob trains single, for free. A small dude, train. Dude, right? I mean, pe people 
would Here see... in LA, you have to bring your own money to be robbed from the train. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> well, that, the thing is, is his dad was a train robber. That's like, how he got they, in. They, mm. ask, they ask you, they ask you, okay, how, do, how many guests can you bring to this train robbery? It's like, if I had eight guests, I wouldn't have to rob trains. <laughs> bring, bring her dr- robbery shows? They now, said you hey, need we're... to be on TV before you can get on our stage. <laughs> Welcome back to the show. Uh, stage the coach. Count. Stage coach. We have John Shevsky on the mound. The count is 2-0. and oh, And uh, high and inside, 3-0 and oh is the count <laughs> as, we, as we head down to the seventh inning stretch. Is that an inside football reference? That was a baseball reference. Inside seven inning, is that so, a, a, seventh inning. Inside mean. gymnastics reference? Is that a, <laughs> <laughs> if you had a gymnastics reference, that'd be really interesting. Yeah. Uh, Ten! Baseball. <laughs> Rube and Jim headed back to Alabama, content for now. But in October of 1887, Brock, Bill Brock got word to meet the brothers at a hotel in Texarkana. The brothers registered under fake names, but brilliant Bill Brock did not use an alias. That was a tongue twister, wasn't it? Brilliant Bill Brock. Yeah, brilliant Bill Brock. I didn't even realize it was <laughs> that twisty I when thinking. I wrote it down. Yeah. You, you, <laughs> I almost had a spit take. I almost had a genuine fucking spit take. Sometimes we need cameras in this show. <laughs> there they planned the next train rob job at Genoa Station. <laughs> that was another fun one. <laughs> train rob, rob, rob. I actually just meant to say job, but I said Rob. No. It wasn't in there. I went off script, guys, and it really hurt. The gang made off with $3,200 in cash and silver. Which is like for the fucking first time, 80 grand now, right? No, which is like 350 grand now. Damn. Yeah. Damn. Uh, but for the first time, they hit real trouble. Word got back to town quickly. The robbers ran into some men from a posse, and a gunfight broke out. While no one was hit, Brock dropped his coat as they fled. Oh, evidencia. Well, uh, the, the thing I want to point out is this posse just rolled up on a group of random, normal looking white dudes and probably started shooting at them. And it just happened to be the right dudes. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Given their fucking history, these posse's history in the story, That's I bet you they just saw a bunch of dudes walking together. It could have been some frat bros or, or you know, it 1860s have, rap group. It must have, and, <laughs> just, and, I, and I'm not sure that, well, okay, yes, yes. 1860s rap group. Yes, let's let them have that one. <laughs> Yo, I like to ride my horse. When I send a message, I send it in Morse. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming to rob your train. If you uh, fuck with me, I'll shoot you in your brain. And then I send you a telegram. I mean, oh, Graham. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and just don't stop. Okay. Come on, that's a good one. Engine Don't Stop. Yeah. Dude, we've got a few classics today. <laughs> Do Engine Don't Stop. Train robbery rap. I mean, I haven't heard it. Have you? Okay. The detectives found the coat and tracked it to a shop in the small town of Alexander. That was the CSI of the old days. Mm-hmm. We found a thousand hairs so woven together. We found, a, we found a burlap sack. Yeah. With a label on it somehow. Where the owner not only remembered it selling it to Bill Brock, but that Bill was headed for Texas. There's Arcana. one train. There's like 75. There's, there's, there's one train. There's, there's one there's, t-shirt. There's 14 coats. There's one, there's one t-shirt. Yeah, there's 14 <laughs> coats. The guy's like, I remember selling that coat. I think it's about, I don't know, Eight years ago, came in. He was talking about the train. That's all we talk about around here. This is a train, and uh, and he left on the train. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, good old triple B. We call him Bustling Bill Brock. Yeah, that's right. With seven Ks at the end, I think it was. All right, follow question for you, sir. Did he mention shoes of any kind? He, lady shoes, I think. Something about uh, lady shoes wanted to go on a train, and uh, I remember that too. He said <laughs> a size a size fourteen lady shoe for him to wear. I mean, own. Would but you I describe this as, a, as, a, as, an, as an athletic heel? What, what, what like, a, like an athlete that's an asshole? I think I'm not communicating myself effectively. I'm going to leave now and go find these guys. Thank you for your information. Um, Would you like some? to buy a coat? I never forget a good coat buyer. We powerful, lonely in here. Please don't leave. <laughs> just two, just we two, remember everybody. Just two old black guys in the old west that sell coats out in the middle of nowhere. I never forget a coated man. Uh, detectives found the coat after the shop oh yeah the guy said he was heading for Texarkana a quick check of hotel registries in the city of Texarkana led again to Bill's name Brock was apprehended at his father-in-law's home after taking his wife on an ill-advised shopping spree Brock immediately confessed to everything and gave up the Burrow brothers son of a bitch rat snitch 
Yeah, this is rats get bats. That's what they used to say back then. Do they? <laughs> yeah, because yeah, they, they hadn't invented stitches yet. Yeah. Like, <laughs> not such thing as stitches. They just sort of seared every wound. They shut. just cut it off if they could. They'd be like, oh, yeah. that needs to be cut off. Oh, they just chopped it off and seared it shut with a torch that they used. Oh, to sh- good sh- god, know? that sounds yeah. horrific. Yeah, that's also a great scene from Dances with Wolves. I don't know if you guys have ever seen it. It's a really great film. <laughs> Never heard. I of recommend it. it. I highly recommend it. What's it about? Well, it, the detectives a- try to track down <laughs> the boys in Alabama. <laughs> But the guys got wind of the search and split town. <laughs> they hopped on a train to Montgomery, but the conductor found their wads of cash and big guns suspicious and sent word ahead for police to meet them at the station. When the boys disembarked... They didn't even try to hide their wad of cash and guns? No. Where the fuck are you going to put it? You're going to put your stolen money in a bank? That's probably not even how they but think. But still, it's literally like you know, a modern uh, like mugger wearing a ski mask all the time. And you're like, that guy's a... He's like, now nah, I'm just here to get some, some pink berry. I just have a cold face. I don't know, but that, that's the thing. Yeah. <laughs> nah, guys, my face is cold. Have you ever worn one of those things? You have to pull these hairs out of your mouth, these synthetic hairs. Every se- It's so gross. It's not comfortable. When the boys... Dis- I wasn't a mugger either. I mean, I've worn it for act- acting stuff. <laughs> I was like, I'm like, have you guys ever had to wear a ski mask and rob people? It's just terrifically harsh. Yeah, likely story. When the boys disembarked, they were met by two undercover officers pretending to be helpful train employees. The detectives offered them to show, to show them the local hotel then marched them straight to jail. When the boroughs realized what was happening, the arrest turned into a brawl. Rube escaped, shooting a man in the process, but Jim tripped over a fire hydrant and was taken into custody. That always happens. Fun fact, there were fire hydrants apparently in 1886. I could see that in certain areas, because in... What what area are we in right now? Are we in Texas still? We're still in... uh, Yeah, we're in Texas, I think, at the moment. Is Texas the... No, we're in Alabama. We're in Alabama. Because... Okay. Well, I, I know. To be fair, I didn't say fire. I just said hydrant. Yeah. It didn't say fire hydrant. I no just assumed that, that's might, the only hydrant that exists. But it could be a hydrant, like you're saying, could be something a little bit more simple than what we have now. But no, they had they had running water in the Roman times. So it's just that. But the finances to do that was Texas and Alabama. I mean, obviously Alabama is the South. It's not the West. But when I'm thinking of Old West, Texas is like the edge of the Old West, right? Yeah. And then the other side of Texas is like is all you know gangs of New York turquoise though. jewelry. It's all Martin Scorsese movies. Oh, they're on the other side of it. Oh, the, and then the other side of it is the direction we're in, in yeah. Colorado, California, New you know, Mexico, Ner- Nerdvada, Nerdvada, Utard. I'm a fair familiar with that. You know, in Origami. Rube made it back to Alabama, <laughs> Washington, and heard of his brother's predic- predicament. Idaho, Utah. Intent on freeing Jim, he enlisted the help of a man, New Mexico, Old Mexico, who called himself Lewis Waldrip, who yeah. was actually named Leonard Brock, no relation to Bill, who Rube insisted on calling Joe Jackson. So let me reread that sentence again. Intent what? on freeing yeah, Jim. Go back. Intent on freeing his brother Jim, mm-hmm. Rube enlisted the help of a man who called himself Len- Lewis Waldrip, who was actually named Leonard Brock, no relation to Bill, who Rube insisted on calling Joe Jackson. So this okay. guy named one thing. You should just rename him so the listeners and us can Rube just keep had, up with it. Rube had once seen Lewis Leonard Joe win a fight, so he was obviously a good partner. Okay, so Rube, I'm confused. Rube met this guy. Because he saw him get in a fight, and he's like, "This guy's a he's a brawler. He's mm-hmm. gonna help me take." You know what I mean? Ruben yeah. Ruben met this guy a while back. Okay, and was like, "You know who's really good at fighting? Lewis Leonard Joe." This is like the movies where he like he just rides his ho- house his horse over to the guy's house, and obviously the guy's home because he's either on the field working on something or he's in his house. Yeah, and it was like, "Hey, you want to come help me?" Yeah, why not? Okay, are there shoes involved? You like shoes too? God, everybody loves shoes so much. The only thing I'm all about. I just got to get my brother out of jail. Can I have his shoes? Yeah, you can have whatever shoes you want. I just need to get my brother out of jail. All right, I'm on board. All right. Are you out there talking to another one of them shoe salesmen? No, go back inside. Is that your and mo- leave your shoes is that your outside. Your mom or your girlfriend or whatever. Like you can come with Both. me. Both. Okay. I'm an amorphous female nag character used in improv since <laughs> time immemorial. <laughs> my it's my mom girlfriend. Oh, that's so gross. Go on with your my, story. My, my girl mom. Get out of this my right mom now. Friend? So gross. Your mom friend? Ew. Y'all got what a mom? What are we supposed to do in the 1800s by ourselves in the woods? We fuck each other. Yeah. With our weird culture, I bet sometime in the future that'll become a, some, a weird cultural norm again like it was in the Roman Empire. He'll come back all of a sudden. You got a mom friend? Alexander fucked a mom friend and he's more accomplished than anybody that's you so know. so weird. That's so gross. Rube had info that his brother might be on a train to Texarkana. So they went to accept the As locomotive. As a prisoner? Like mm-hmm. a trans- mm-hmm. transport of a prisoner. I like the classicness of that, too. Handcuffs, trains, a couple sheriffs. So Rube and his new partner went to intercept the locomotive in Donaldson. But Rube decided to search a few trains in the, t- in the nearby town of Curtis just in case. They found nothing. 
Then they heard a train was on its way to the also ridiculously named town of Arkadelphia. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Arkansas, Philadelphia. Let's like, just go Arkadelphia. It's like somebody in Eastern Europe making fun of America. Like, yeah, you know, they live in Arkadelphia or some And bullshit. Texarkana. Arkadelphia sounds like a really bad corporation, too. Alla, New York, Bama, Florida, something. They rode to the town but missed the train. Having put in a solid afternoon of barely trying to rescue Jim, <laughs> Rube and Lewis Leonard Joe decided to rob a train instead. Oh, dude, while we're here, why don't we just go rob a train? Yep. That's, That's kind of what they're going. Meanwhile, back in Texas, Brumley and Nep were busy actually trying to help Jim by trying to kidnap and kill a witness. Luckily, the man escaped. It wouldn't matter anyway, because soon after, Jim Bur- Burrow became ill and died in prison. Oh, dude. I mean, yep. well, I mean, uh, it's, I mean, he's a criminal, but still, anytime someone gets ill. Rube and, and Louie Lenny Joe settled on a train la, 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 in la. Duck Hill, Mississippi. Duck Hill? Why do they call that? You get this um, just covered in duck shit? Because there was... Uh, you ever the, seen duck shit? It's fucking gross. It was named Duck Hill because there was a, a Native American chief who decided to call himself like Duck something or something Duck. Okay. And that was the hill that he kicked it on. Mm, yeah. I'd like to smoke the peace pipe with him. It's your hit, chief. Oh. I'm like, wow, you're just like my grandpa. Thanks, chief. The robbery went much like the rest at first. They boarded the train and forced the engineer to stop at a predetermined location. Standard. But this time, some foolishly brave passengers decided to use their guns. Oh, fair. One of the men... Chester Hughes was fatally shot. Chester's, <laughs> Chester's last words were, Butch, I'm done for. You there really, was no one named Butch that they can talk, they can tell on the train. You could have. Ah! First of all, you made it so comedic, that poor guy's last breath, and you're like, Butch, I'm done for. What a dork. But the poor guy, that was his last breath. Butch might have been like some chick he was fucking or some dude he was fucking. Butch like, was his rosebud. All right. Oh, well, there you go. Classic, the robbers made off with around nineteen hundred dollars worth of cash and silver. Yeah, they're making baller cash. Oh yeah, they're making they're making legit legit the, fucking. They money. can almost buy a house in L.A. <laughs> Only twenty more robberies, boys, and then we can get a three bedroom off Melrose. <laughs> Back in Texas, Brumley went on trial for the robberies and attempted witness murder, but the key witness against him was brilliant Bill Brock. The defense had no difficulty painting him as a moron he was, and Brumley walked free. By now, Rube was becoming a recognizable figure, so he came up with another brilliant plan. Disguises! Yeah, it's like, well, what's the point of being rich if you literally can't even go out and go get a piece of sushi? Because everyone knows who you are. I mean, he can't do anything, and somehow he never has any money. Delivery would get boring. A piece of 1888 sushi. Well, I mean, it's a bad example. I guess sushi's a bad example. I'm trying to make it our times. I I think, think, (laughs) is he going to eat some sushi and then take his wife to Dances with Wolves? (laughs) I'm just saying you're pretty much just describing my favorite <laughs> night out on the town, right? Just me and my wife, we could get some sushi, get some dance with wolves. You, on. wife, sushi, Kevin Costner. I would always like, like to eat raw fish and then go sit in the dark for three hours watching white dudes deal with Indians. I've gone out for sushi before movies so many times. It's one of my favorite things, Ed. But you're going to make me second guess myself from here on out. <laughs> As I'm sitting in the next film, I'm be like, what am I doing? <laughs> This yellowtail is slowly breaking down in my belly. <laughs> Meanwhile, there's still two hours left of the film. I need to go pee right now, but this is an integral scene. He ordered a wig and a beard from a company in Chicago using a fake name. Amazon Prime. Have a bite tonight. <laughs> Get a robbery on. Uh, the, an 1890s steampunk droid. Mm. I mean, a drone. Yeah. Dropped it off. But he wrote the return address so poorly it was sent to the wrong post office. Oh, I've done that. Yep. Yep, bad writing, dude. You only, only doctors can get away with it. You're rich enough to make those mistakes. When he went to claim it, the postal worker refused to hand it over, instead moving for his shotgun. Rube pulled his pistol, shot him dead, took his disguise, and left. So, just <laughs> has, is this the first guy he's killed? Because he shot a few people. This has is he, the first one that we know he's killed. Yeah, okay. So yeah. he might have killed people that aren't so recorded the very first This person. is the first reco- like officially recorded murder on Rube Burrow's docket. This is the now whether he history. killed someone out in the middle of the fucking woods at some point, exactly, or whether the got Chester Hughes was shot by his bullet or someone else's bullet, whatever the fuck's going on. This is the first one that we know of for sure where Rube was like, but, bam, bam, boom, dead. But that's hilarious. That's like that's like uh, uh, the very first time he shoots somebody is getting his his disguise so he can go rob somebody. So it's like it'd be like if if I was like a. I don't know. If I was like a anything, and I I don't I lost it. Sorry. That's all but right. The bottom line is that's the first time you murder somebody is in the prep game of yeah. another crime. 
Not the commission of an That's how much That's he's crazy. foaming at the mouth. He's ready to go. I'm ready to go in, coach. Anything you put in front of me, I'm going to fucking commit a crime on it. That's how into crime I am. All right. You know, I I, I, I like your gumption. Okay. Doing great, doing great in practice. In. I'm ready. Just put on your heels real quick and get yeah. on out there. Yeah, I'll put them on and then I'll walk over there like this. <laughs> Give me all your money. Uh, here at the American Podcast Awards, we <laughs> hand out our Foley. Our Foley. Our Foley. Our yeah, that'd be weird if I got a Foley award. Our Foley prize is the most coveted. And John Shevsky has won it for yeah. the fourth straight year. Thank you guys so much. Uh, I just want to thank. Um, I just want to thank God and my family, and uh, and just uh, I learned from watching uh, those parts. Hey, of the my DVDs. name's Kanye West. I'm just going to tell you, Beyonce should have won the award for making the best sounds <laughs> on podcasts because obviously she's the best in the world. Also, I got leather pants. Fuck you. I'm out. That was a fucking hilarious way to cut it and end it. That was genius. And I'm not Kanye West, so I can't really say anything is genius, but yeah. Local law enforcement had enough, so they arrested most of Rube's family. They even put a noose around his 15-year-old nephew's neck, threatening to hang him if he didn't give up his uncle. Oh, wow. Wow, 15-year-old. You could do that in those days, huh? If you did that today, your ass would be on, on what do they call it? On the street. Or You'd lose your or prob- job. Or probably fine, to be uh, honest. I'm really glad the police work hasn't changed at all. Yeah. They would never do that these days. It didn't help. <laughs> we don't have rope. That's the they only wouldn't reason. threaten a child's life. There's no rope. That's the real reason. Pressing the family didn't help. Rube and Louie Lenny Joe hid out in the woods, and the Burroughs' con- relatives continued to smuggle them food. Of course, nothing makes running from the law more fun than another robbery. While you're running from the law? Yeah. If they're playing GTA, the, the military would be after them by now. There'd be five <laughs> stars flashing. The pair recruited we'll do anything. The pair recruited Rube's cousin, Just also called Rube, to help rob another train at Be- <laughs> at, at Buckatuna Station. So wait, wait, wait. by by my count and Chefsy's count, there is one train. There mm-hmm. are fourteen coats, and there's seventeen names. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> in this universe, the names are the best thing about uh, old crimes. Yeah, there are so many crazy names. So the now, so now you have Rube, Luby Lenny Joe, Luby Lenny Joe, Rube's cousin Rube. Yep. And they're going to go rob a train in Buckatuna Station. That's a that's a great name. Buckatuna. Yep. Tim Buckatuna, too. The robbery ran the same as ever, and the crew made off with over $4,000 worth of loot. I wonder if they get sushi there. Buckatuna. Let me get some spicy, buck a spicy tuna. Huh? I got two bucks. There's no rice. It's only sashimi. Despite the biggest manhunt yet, the men were f- nowhere to be found. By now, the papers had dubbed Rube Burrow as the King of Outlaws. Rube Burrow, you're the king of the outlaws. No one ever better than you at the game. Rube Burrow, you're the king of the places. And your cousin has the same damn name. <laughs> right Get back to the story, you fucking freak. But as with any heist, eventually someone spends too much money. Rube's cousin Rube began to attract attention with his overly lavish lifestyle. I bought three horses, even a Ferrari horse. <laughs> I bought five 25 cent horses and now I got the federal lace. This oh horse came. <laughs> you gotta, gotta go get them painted real quick so that the stars stop lighting up and you can go free from. My the- Ferrari course, horse came with a hat and gloves <laughs> and a horse chain that I keep on my wallet. <laughs> like, how would you show off and get noticed in those days to buy stuff? Look how many cans of tuna I bought <laughs> straight from New York. <laughs> I'm rich. I have two jackets now. Like, what did you buy in those Yo, days? There's 17 coats. I own four yeah, of them. Yeah. yeah. Hey, Jim, I'm, so, <laughs> I'm so rich, I invented a new name. I'm now John. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's an old name? Fuck. I need to get more money. <laughs> hey, where'd you get all these slaves, man? Man, you never could afford slaves before. It's like 40 slaves in a garage. <laughs> we um, have nowhere to go. Um, excuse me. This uh, I, I really hate to break it to you, um, but you can't have slaves anymore. Like oh yeah, that's it's 1880. Been, that's Sorry. Been, yeah, you're not allowed to have. Fuck. Not, well, I just meant employees. We're, we're not saying it's wrong. We're saying you're not rich enough to have slaves <laughs> in, the, in the 1880s. Oh. I know if you were rich enough, you could have them all the way up to 2016. <laughs> I mean, you want to make an iPhone in the future, you're gonna only need slaves. But you gotta be hella rich. Just don't tell them they're slaves. Hey, I don't know if you have the memo yet, but the slaves are no longer black. They are Chinese now. Slaves are everyone rich. Let's be fair, dude. There's a lot of wage slaves throughout the entire world, even the Western world. If you take someone's life and you spend most of the time doing something they're not liking to do, they're unhappy, you've enslaved them. I have eight piercings in my face, and I work as a barista in San Francisco, and I can tell you that he is correct. Thank you. That was, that's a really good example, guy, to help like <laughs> help be, my, to be my, my reference for things. I'll have you now speak to my lawyer. 
And you're a lawyer that works at a coffee shop that has a bunch of piercings? Yeah. Rube's cousin Rube was arrested days later while casing a station for his own robbery attempt. He was branching off? Mm Mm-hmm. While also having someone pretend to be Rube Burrow. I bet you enjoy robbing stuff so much at a certain point because being a slave and working sucks so much. Oh, yeah. That as soon as you get the, like, you're like, so I can not have to be a slave and I can do this adrenaline pumping thing right now. It probably becomes addicted to certain people, especially if you're willing to hurt people. And that's how the movie Point Break was made. I love that movie. By now, the area was filled with detectives trying to track Rube Burrow through his relatives. They all tried to go undercover as everything from beggars to lightning rod salesmen, which I didn't know was a thing. <laughs> anything to give them an excuse to approach a relative of Rube's. That sounds like he would also been like the old school milkman. Like, I never met my daddy. He was a lightning rod salesman. <laughs> Went from town to town. Giving him the old bolt. <laughs> no, I see what you did there, because the bolt is... It got so bad <laughs> his that wad, a legitimate His, his Bible... wads shoot out at hard angles. <laughs> Like oh, bolts? that'd be crazy. Yeah, dude, to come like that. Yeah, that's how the Flash comes. It comes <laughs> tiny, tiny <laughs> little the, the Flash bolts. comes real fast. Talk about free come. <laughs> the Flash comes very fast. No, but here's the thing. The Flash comes real quick, but his recoil is so good that he's like, I've come, I've relaxed, I'm ready to go again. I've made you breakfast. Like you have like a yeah. whole like a breakfast in bed tray that he makes. Oh no, I came like 20 minutes ago, that, baby. That is one thing that I, re- I really hate though. It's like when they have somebody that has super speed doing something you cannot do at super speed. Mm-hmm. You cannot cook at super speed. You can't make eggs super fast. They take as long as they take. Yeah. You know oh, what I mean? but, but also though, here's another thing that's interesting. I'm make a cake. Damn it, fast. Flash keeps burning the food. <laughs> You could, you could, you could, uh, by moving fast enough, the friction of atoms in the air actually would uh, cause like uh, things to burn up. I was reading a thing about three D printers and how they, some people like they're going to be able to like print people like uh, what do you call it? like transfer people? Uh, what do they call it? like in Star Wars oh, teleportation? Uh, tele- uh, whatever, yeah, beam them. And beam like them. And they're talking about like in those movies how you like how you, you should show them like building like an organic thing like, really fast like and they just build a person and it's like no a printer to even move that fast to get that many atoms like there's so many per every centimeter you know. Mm. Mm-hmm. Like it would just like it would set the air on fire because of the speed to do it. You're like holy fuck! Like practi- does that make sense? Like the practicality yeah. of the science. Yeah, I think that was similar to what you're saying with the the flesh making breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> All right, and that's a science word brought to you by the Neil deGrasse Tyson Charity Fund. Uh, now back to you, Rich. With the heat turning up, <laughs> Rube's family urged him to find a new place to hide. You've got to just find a new place to hide. So he decided to go to the one place that no one looks for criminals. Disneyland! Florida. Oh, yeah, Disneyland for, for old Jews. Rube borrowed a pair of oxen and a cart from his family, and the boys headed south. He borrowed it? Are you sure? He's a thief. Oh, a, a, a big theme in this story, which I really haven't played on a lot, was that Rube did two things to avoid the law. One was he would go back to Lamar County, where his family was from, mm-hmm. and like stay in the woods during the daytime and then like sleep in like different family members' houses. His family was all super helping him out the entire time. Okay. They were like, we know you're a robber, but we love you and you're giving us some cash, so we'll kind of feed you and help you evade the law. He also was super cool with like black people and would go and hang out in weird black cabins. I thought you said he shot a bunch of Indians, though. He didn't know. His, his friends all shot Indians. Oh, okay. He would go around in like woods and find like, here's a black family at a cabin. Hey, guys. I'm not going to hurt you. Can I give you some money and kick it? Oh, and so yeah. he would just like bounce from black cabin to black cabin to his family to black cabin. And that was his whole thing. They really call it black. cabin. That sounds like a town. Yeah. Black I grew cabin. up in black cabin. <laughs> it's yeah. good. Actually real close knit families for being all the things that he is a guy from Alabama who robs trains in Texas in 1886. He's like oddly progressive. Okay. I see what you're saying. Yeah. I'm an equal opportunity robber. Yeah. That's how ridiculous we are these times. People can do horrendous things, but if you're like, well, there, it's not there, sexist. There okay, are some subplots him. I cut for time, including his the, his family helping him out a bunch and how he was basically like the Neil Brennan of his time. <laughs> Just a bit outside. What an and, interesting... And uh, the count's 4-0. <laughs> Ed Greer takes the base. Uh, let's see. For some reason, Louis Lenny Joe wasn't into the idea of heading to Florida, so he split for Louisiana with plans for the two to meet up and rob more trains soon. For a while, Rube worked under a fake name, hauling goods using his own his, his cart and oxen, but it didn't take long for detectives to track him down. They tried to set a trap for him on his normal hauling route, but he somehow sensed what was happening and escaped once again into the forest. So he's in full hiding now. There's, it's not like he's like, I hope they don't know that I'm the robber. They know he's the robber, and now he's just trying to like yes. play it off as a different person, 
which is even in the old days really hard to do. Yeah, at this point, because he's because he is like public enemy number one, pretty much. I bet the sheriffs, the detectives are probably going around from town to town, going like, "Is anybody new moved here lately?" Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, that guy right there. Huh, interesting. He fits the description of someone else that would be leaving. Okay, yeah. Okay, I see how they could do it. Empty-handed, the detectives took Rube's oxen cart and sold it for eighty dollars. The buyer promptly turned Burrow's oxen cart team into a tourist attraction. Riding the cart during the local Mardi Gras parade. Wait, this is after like he was he been arrested or no? He, so basically, they tried to set a trap for him. He bolted, but he left his oxen cart and they sold it. And the the detective sold it, and the guy was like, "Cool, I have Rube, I have this robber Rube Burroughs shit. I'll put like it's everyone will look at it. Yeah, it's, it's an, an attraction. Because back then there was See, nothing. To the do. wheel that went over the dirt when he stole something. Yeah. See the ox that witnessed the robberies. Okay. Yep. I'm into that. When Rube didn't show for his planned meet with Louis Lenny Joe, the partner went to look for him back in Alabama. When Rube failed to appear, he turned his gun over to the Burrow family and vowed never to use a firearm again. Oh, he's a changed man. He boarded a train to start his new life in Kentucky and was promptly arrested by the sheriff. On the train? Mm-hmm. Oh, man, Under pressure, on the irony. Trains, guys. Irony is correct, right? Under pressure, he quickly flipped and gave up all the information he had. The iron of the railroad. Rube was now the only member of his gang still at large. But a lack of partners could not stop Rube Burrow. At 7.50 p.m. on Monday, the September 1890, Rube jumped on the train number six near the Alabama-Florida border. He pulled out his pistols and once again ordered the train to stop halfway on a bridge. As it turns out, robbing a train on your own is much more difficult than with a team, and Rube only made out with $256.16. Now the law truly closed Which in. comes out to how much money? Way less. That does not give me a boner or make me well. Two thousand was like two hundred ninety thousand, so two hundred is going to be like two thousand. No, twenty nine thousand. Yeah, something like that. That's still pretty cool. I mean, it's not enough to buy anything out of like you know you can't even really get a, an Acura or an Infinity, but you could still buy like a <laughs> Nissan or a Honda. True. Those are all names of horses. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Acura, come here, girl. <laughs> Now the law <laughs> truly closed in. Oh, they were dude. getting wide to his methods of staying, of getting food from supporters and peeling away into the woods. Officers staged lookouts Sounds at all like his favorite lifestyle. haunts, forcing Rube to make his way alone through the swamps of Florida. Reports of sightings began to pop up, and the lawmen knew they were only hours behind their target. On a hunch, Detective John McDuffie rode out one night joined by Dixie Carter, a volunteer. Is that a chick? It's a guy oh. whose nickname is Dixie. Sounds hot, though, right? Dixie Carter? <laughs> oh, Dixie, you're Carter. <laughs> Agent Dixie Carter. <laughs> yeah, there's a few people who get that. McDuffie suspected that Rube might try to cross the Alabama River under the cover of darkness. That night, Rube made camp in the outhouse of Jesse Hildreth, who was later described in the documents as, quote, a very worthy and reliable colored man. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like my grandpa filled out that paperwork. Am I right, fellas? <laughs> Hildreth discovered Rube and immediately knew that this was the man everyone was looking for. But he was sharp and played it cool. He offered to show Rube the way to his next destination, a ruse to keep his eye on the outlaw. As they walked, it began to rain, so Hildreth suggested that they take shelter at the home of another black fellow named George Ford. While Rube ate, Hildreth snuck out and found two members of the posse, McDuffie and Carter. Since Ford's cabin sat in an open field, two white men approaching would be easily noticed by the skittish outlaw. A plan was made. The black men would go inside and grab Rube, then the white men would come in and arrest him. Hilberth went back inside. It's like the dangerous job? Yeah. Like, Operation Human Shield has always been in effect. Is that South Park yeah. or Glory? <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. Hilberth um, went back inside and offered to help Rube pack his belongings, they get starting the with his rifle. Too. The cops are like, we got him! No. And no one else helped yeah. at all. Just me and my friend over here independently. Pay no attention to the Negroes behind me. As soon as Hilbreth had the weapon, he tossed it aside and grabbed Rube, his friend joining in. Rube fought hard, trying to use a fork as a weapon. Ooh. But it was no use. A fork, right? That's that seems that sounds like, gross for like a man like worried about going to jail though. Right? Like you might you might lose an eye. He was wrestled to the ground before McDuffie and Carter came in to finish the arrest. 
So the fork didn't do anything bad. Fork did nothing. Okay. He did bite one of the guys go Ooh, on the shoulder. That's gross. It's very gross. Ugh. That's oddly progressive to bite a Negro in those days. Like, <laughs> you <laughs> think the black guy shook his hand? I don't want to turn into a Negro. I don't want to bite. I him. told you that Rube Rube Burrow was quite progressive for yeah. his era. You think the black guy afterwards was like, I just want to let you know, like, uh, appreciate that you bit me. Uh, a lot of white men wouldn't have done something like that. I, I think, uh, and, and I'll. I have a hanker in the Rob trains now, though. It's, it's, it's weird. He turns into him. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, I want to travel around to these black people's houses and stay with them. Yeah. Even though I'm black, I still like to be the white guy that does that. <laughs> Rube was taken to jail in Demopolis, where he quickly became the talk of the town. Is that the old board game, Demopolis? Yes. <laughs> okay. Locals were allowed to march to the jail and even have short conversations with the outlaw. Why? Like it was a tourist attraction? Yeah, because they're like, nothing else would like... Can yeah, we do that nowadays? Can we go visit inmates and just be like, what's up? How'd you I mean, get in here? You, Does it suck? I guess you can put yourself on the register, register registry, and if they say, yeah, they'll visit with you, you could just visit random inmates. That might be fun. We I feel like that might be a thing. Can we do that for crime? Just do crime, you, you me, and a criminal? I <laughs> literally don't want to be part of that at all. <laughs> You think it's too scary? Like, well, I'll say the wrong thing to a criminal and then he'll, like slam up against the glass. I'm gonna kill you, motherfucker! I, I was just uh, I, this is a show where we riff, dude. Like, you could have made fun of me. Like, <laughs> that riff was terrible. Yeah. I'm gonna stab you with a fucking toothpick. Yeah, like teardrop a, tattoo guy. No, no thanks. Um, so you won't come do that with us. Okay. Eventually, the excitement died down. Carter, feeling ill, took Rube's cash and rifle back to his hotel. McDuffie, Hilbreth, and a guard stuck around to watch the prisoner. Around three or four in the morning, Rube told his captors that he was hungry. When they told him no one was serving food at this hour, he asked for them to hand him his bag where he had some candy and ginger snaps. Mm. They obliged. Seems like the kind of guy that'd have candy and ginger snaps. Rube reached his hand into the bag. Pulled out a fucking revolver. And pulled and out. shot himself in the dick. Some candy, which he shared with his jailers. Oh, okay. Well, one of our stories is true. You guys can vote on which one you think is true. <laughs> they sat around eating it, eating and swapping stories. Eeping it. Eeping. Eep it up, fellers. They I'm sat around read eating them in <laughs> and swapping stories. <laughs> swapping. Until Rube reached in his bag again and pulled out a revolver. Oh, okay. Yeah, this is a good, uh, this is a good film right here. Holy yep. fuck. Dude, you wrote a good screenplay for this episode. Thanks. This should be. I would like to see this. Right. The the bat the shittiness of how they fir their first robbery, then them turning into actual robbers, then running from all the all the stuff and the way they had to hide. This and just, then this scene. Yeah, I, I just want to. I want to see. Tension. I want to see the 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 story of the the guy who taught cops how to be good at being cops because obviously he did not exist yet. I mean, this this is ridiculous. The security measures are all ridiculous. The the cops. Techniques are all ridiculous. This is retarded. I think there were a lot of honor based, like, um, what do you call it? Um, like manners in the old days where they just based mm -hmm. things on honors. Like, well, you wouldn't it'd be dishonorable if you treat someone like this way, even when they, it was like your conscience would let you know, like, this is dangerous to be like this. But, right. well, he's allowed to have his last, you know, five shots with the shotgun. You know, hopefully, <laughs> well, he, he'd never yeah. pointed at us. He's a gentleman. Yeah, he's, he's we <laughs> caught him. The game is over. Yeah, I mean, by, by that rationale, all like cops should have been women and children because no one would shoot a woman or a child. Like, yeah. Just uh, chicks and chicks and kids come up to you. You know you gotta go to jail, Clem. Come on like, with us. Oh, Put these right. here handcuffs on and now don't hit me. You know that's untoward. Yeah. <laughs> they just take motherfuckers. All right, jail. young fellow, I was just playing a game with you. You win. <laughs> you win. Rube forced Hilbreth Hildreth to chain the other two <laughs> Hilbreth to chain the other two to the wall. Now he wanted to his the wall. and the window. Sweat, balls. Now he wanted his rifle and money back from Carter. So he put his gun to Hilbreth's back and told the man to take him to see the to, to see the volunteer. Hilbreth, cunning once again, pretended he didn't know where to find Carter and led Rube all over town looking for the volunteer. <laughs> After an hour, Rube threatened to kill him if they didn't find him. Soon. That would have been really frustrating if you were the criminal. Like, yeah. motherfucker, I'm not playing. And then like, he keeps taking his license. I told you I'm not playing. But you can't kill him because you're trying like, to get your shit back. Yeah. There's no Google ways. This is 1890. Well, the, 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 actually, the real funny thing of this is that Hel uh, Hilbreth just took him like anywhere and just was knocking on random, or Hildreth was just ra knocking on like random doors. Yeah. And, being, and just going, hey, is Carter here? And he did that for an hour. <laughs> And then Rube's, Rube's like, okay, you know where he is, right? He's like, no, no, he's probably over here. Hey, is Carter in here now? <laughs> Just knocking around a stranger door. He's like, yeah. ah, ah, who? Yeah. So. Ain't seen him. Hilbreth took Rube to Carter's hotel and told the owner that Carter was needed at the jail. 
Carter stepped out of the hotel to find Rube's gun in his face. Rube demanded the rifle and money. Carter said okay and quickly drew down. Both men fired. Oh. Carter was hit in the shoulder, his arm paralyzed for the rest of his life. Rube took a bullet in the stomach, stumbled 10 paces, leaped in the air, then fell to the ground dead. Whoa. Whoa. Wow. People's death throws are pretty weird. I'm telling you, this is a fucking great movie because the scene with the candy and the ginger snaps, <laughs> yeah. so. Do. Yeah, rat- ratcheting Do. up the tension. Oh, dude, the leather or the burlap of like opening stuff too and like reaching in and be like, oh my God, he's going to pull out a gun and fucking blow them away. Holy you, fuck, it's you know ginger snaps. Would, but you know what I would love? I would love to see this movie, but with like a 1980s like Miami criminal soundtrack. Okay. Like, like, All like synths. When, yeah, like when homeboys, the, when they rob trains and I'm like, bing, 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 Yeah. <laughs> But but it, but but done old west still right? Yeah, like yeah, the actual yeah. filming is old west. Yeah yeah yeah. Like the music score would be a bunch of synths. Yeah, that would be fucking rad. What are the movie? Yeah, that's rad. I would love bing, that. Bing, bing. Like Rube? it'd be like Lady Hawk. Yeah. Oh, dude, that sounds fucking awesome. Like like I'm also thinking like Friday, not Friday the Thirteenth. Uh, uh, Freddy Krueger kind of music. You know, like heavy like synthy yeah. 80s stuff during those like tension scenes and like. But yeah, the ginger when, he, when, he, when he runs and jumps in his death throws, they play the Scarface thing like, boom, boom, yeah, boom, like that. It's a, this is beautiful. We need to make this movie. <laughs> Does anyone in here have eight hundred thousand dollars so we can make a low budget film? Rube's body, yeah, was just was hot. Quickly, oh, so cut was quickly embalmed. That and dick, them balls. He was one of the only men to bleach their asshole in the eighteen hundreds. I mean, this guy, you could eat soup off of his skin. Rube's body was quickly embalmed. By embalmed. Yeah, embalmed. He was involved in a crime. I don't know what words are anymore. <laughs> ah, well, there are these things that your, your abstract brain kind of puts together to symbolize things. Rube's and... body was quickly embalmed and placed in a cheap pine coffin. Yo, that body is embalmed. That's it a embalmed ass body. It was put in the middle of town and left open for the public to take a look. See what happens? See what happens when you get away with shit for a long time, but then you get <laughs> shot? About 500 people came to see the body. Which is a lot in those days. That's like Many taking today. souvenirs from it. Buttons. Fing- shoes. Fingers. <laughs> oh, shoes. shit. I was going to say, yeah. Even locks of hair. Yeah, pulling off his pubes. Yeah. Well, just twisting them and then putting them in your pocket. This is a criminal's hair. The body was then taken to Birmingham, where hundreds more came to see the famous dead outlaw. His body was posed for pictures with his rifle, pistols, and hat. Wow. Two men even offered to buy it, wanting to take it on tour around the country. Is that th- here's the body? Like uh, yeah, like, uh, you wanna, buy your tickets to I see it. Do like a, a weekend at Rube's, and then just sort of be like, "This is a, this is famed outlaw Rube, whatever the fuck." And we're robbing this train. I'm just and say, they, yeah, they, 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 they move its mouth. Rube, which one you want us to get first? <laughs> Rube. All right, he said that one. Give me your money. <laughs> hey, help Rube up into the train, and then yeah. just give the whole dead weight of a body to this guy. <laughs> the, the conductor, the, the conductor you've been robbing all the time that hates you guys for robbing. Like, <laughs> you're like, take his hand. Go ahead, lift him up. <laughs> and the, the guy, the, the, the groundhog, <laughs> the groundhog day guy is like, when will this ever end? Yeah. <laughs> now they've got us lifting up the. De- oh God, rob another train. Hey Charles, I am really excited about our date tonight. So, um, just out of curiosity, what do you, I mean, what are we doing? What do we have planned? Are we going to just go see a, mo- a talking picture or, or like a moving picture, I guess? We're going to rob a train and you're going to come with me and my buddy Rube's coming with me. He, that guy's dead. He's coming with us. This is a very different date than I expected. He, well, I got to tell you something else. We're swingers. I, it, it ain't no fun if you know what I'm saying there. <laughs> Rube can't have none. <laughs> I'm not even supposed <laughs> to be here today. <laughs> 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 Bluegrass. <laughs> With a violin and everything. <laughs> Just lay on back. <laughs> You can't fuck that day, baby. <laughs> yeah. All, all the homies are here. And open your game. <laughs> all the homies are here. John's here. Ed's here. I'm here. Rube's body is here. <laughs> My horse Silver's here. All the homies are here. Let's do it. Table for seven. <laughs> oh no, he, he he he's good. Sir, can I? can I get you? <laughs> he's fine. <back. laughs> this is mighty kindly for you to submit to all these gangbangs. You're a real dick shepherd. <laughs> Rube's family sold the pine coffin to a cheap museum for display. 
His clothes were loaned to an exhibition at the Montgomery County Fair. There was even a plaster cast made of his face for a traveling exhibition. When Louis Lenny Joe learned of his partner's death, oh, Louis Lenny Joe. he felt so much remorse for flipping on his friend that he escaped his cell, climbed to the top of the jail, and killed himself and jumped off. Really? Yep. Dude. Wow. The what only, an idiot. The you got out of member, jail. The only member of the gang not accounted for is Nep. Nep uh, kind of di- like disappeared off the road. He, he may have helped. I think Jesse James, the train robbery at some point. Oh, wow. And then Nep just disappeared. He's the only one who there's no record. So he might have actually lived a, like a life out by oh, himself. Oh, yeah. Like no, Nep might be gone to Mexico. It. I got nothing. I'm out. <laughs> I, uh, my brain's fried. My brain's fried. Cut that part out. Today's sources. Let the Lord edit that. Today's sources. <laughs> Listeners, plug ears. <laughs> include rich. the book Rue Burrow Desperado by Rick Miller. And, of course, the evil robots at Wikipedia. Desperado. Is that what the Eagle song is based on? Desperado. Probably. You know, it's interesting to note about this. This guy was, in his time, possibly even more famous than Jesse James. Like, he was the most famous train robber of his day. But Jesse James and a lot of other other big outlaws, they had their own families that would try to keep the myth going. Mm -hmm. And Rue Burroughs' family got so fucked up by all this that they weren't out there, like, propagating the burrow myth so rue burrow he's arguably should be a, a name that we all know but yeah. a lack of alliteration yeah and the family not pushing the story forward and now he's an unknown a person that also he never so got fr- the classic nickname like you know jesse james is the alliteration billy the kid yeah sure. you know what i mean there, there's no like buffalo rube, bill yeah rube the guy who died in a hop what's you his last what name I mean? Ru- burrow rube burrow Ruby Burrow has it's, a story he must tell. It's just not catchy. Damn, no, that sucks. Ruby Burrow, right? So he was like a he was like a, a underground rapper it's the of double, Train Robbie. It's the double B's on huh? Rube Burrow. You have to stop. You have to really halt to get to the Burrow. He's the Doctor Octagon of <laughs> Train Robbers. <laughs> cool Keith. This yeah, dude's man. fresh as fuck. Nobody knows who he is. Maybe if it was Rue Burrow. L R U E Rubero. I mean R- Rubero. If his last name was Rubero and his first name was like Robert Rubio. Rubero, yeah, th- 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 maybe we know him. Ed, where can people find you on the interwebs? Uh, they can find me on Twitter at Ed Greer Destroys, and they can find me on Instagram at Ed Greer Destroys, and they can find me on Deviant Art at Ed Greer Destroys. Ed Greer Destroys. So just uh, search Ed Greer Destroys and find a big treasure trove of comedy and art. And super duper funny, great artist. Oh, dude, great, great visual artist, great comedian artist, great life artist. Uh, uh, you know, he says he destroys, but you guys have to remember, it's not a negative thing to destroy; it's a positive thing. You have to destroy so that you can rebuild. I just want to say that. On if you want to find the podcast, you can find <laughs> us on the social medias on Twitter, Instagram, whatever at Crime Pod, Crime P O D. You'll also find mine and John's personal social medias attached over there. It's and, very personal. Uh, you can email it's us crimepodcast at gmail.com. Oh, please do. Send us, you know, suggestions for other stories yes. or any questions you have. Yes. Any dick pics you want to send. send those. Any of those things are totally welcome, especially those. the last one and nope. you enable it for John yep. specifically. I do not want dick pics. And uh that's the story of Rue Burrow. That's the story of Rue Burrow. Bye, robot. Bye, robot, bye, robot, bye, robot. Doom.